Hi, I'm Neef from Catfish, and I'm here with MTV News journalist and True Life Crime host Doma T. Pungo, and we're about to show you an unaired clip from True Life Crime involving the case of Lauren Agee. In which you'll see me and Lauren's friend Cassie explore the cliffside campsite where Lauren was last seen alive. When's the last time you were here? So it's been a little over five years since I've been back to this actual marina. What does it feel like? It's kind of weird. Just the fact that I had a friend that passed away here, and that whole weekend was just not something I'd ever want to relive. About right here is where we can climb up to the, the campsite. I'm just going to step up the rocks and get up there. Oh, yeah. You can grab that if you need to. We are here. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right, so this is the campsite. About right here is where Lauren's hammock was. Break down what you've heard happened out here that night. The theory that is going right now, she woke up in the middle of the night, she fell out of the hammock going to the bathroom, and she stumbled into the water. Is it even possible for you to be able to swing off into the water and, and fall down? You can't fall out of this hammock unless the ropes break. To demonstrate, Cassie brought a hammock similar to the one from that weekend. And this is your hammock. You just get in, and you're in. But when you get in... It kind of cocoons it, around it, you, yeah. It cups around you. Another thing is the marina's right there. You're telling me that no one was awake or no one heard a scream, a yell, a splash? Mm -hmm. There's no way. I mean, look how many houseboats are out here right now. Just imagine Wakefest. There's twice as many boats here. This is, this don't make sense. Having been to the campsite years later, what are some of the questions that you have now that you feel either weren't asked or, or need to be asked about what really happened that day? The craziest thing about this investigation was there was no investigation. There were so many different inconsistencies with the story, and just being there with Cassie made it even more apparent that something fishy happened. It doesn't even look like all of the evidence was collected from the campsite. She saw things that were at the campsite from the day they actually camped there. See the tiki torches? Yeah, yeah. They're still here. You, you believe that those are the same ones from five years ago? You can tell. It does look exactly like the one in the photo, too. I don't know of anyone camping up here since. It is sitting right in front of the two trees that we see in this picture right here. And mind you, I went to the campsite twice. I went once with Cassie, and then I went again with Detective Johnson and did tests to see if it was possible that this could really be an accident. And when you do the test, the body doesn't just fall into the water. It hits different rocks. And we did multiple tests like this. This is crazy. I can only imagine how frustrated I would be if I were friends or family with someone who had died under these circumstances. What can someone do yeah. if they feel like an investigation isn't asking the right questions to solve a crime? Well, there's a few things that a family can try to do. Um, if they have the resources, get the help of a private investigator. Lauren AG's family had those resources, and perhaps an attorney. Now, most families in America might not have the money to be able to do that kind of thing. That's when you try to solicit the help of a pro bono attorney. Why that helps is if you're able to file a civil lawsuit, you may be able to get a deposition going where you can ask questions to the authorities who were in charge of that case to see if they have any other answers. Are there still people who were there that night that haven't offered their testimony on what happened? These friends are still around, but they're not answering questions, they're not talking, and of course, it's not illegal to take the Fifth Amendment, which is what they did in connection with the civil suit. Plus, this was ruled as an accident, not a homicide, which changes the kinds of questions that police would ask. So there's nothing you can do to require someone who was present and potentially a witness of a crime to tell you what happened. Fifth Amendment is a right we all have. But they ruled it an accident based on what they had said. Yeah, that's wild, right? That seems crazy. Yeah.